There actually is a place where life is like a box of chocolates. And just in time for Christmas, Luke Burbank takes us there. Christmas is almost here. But forget about Santa's workshop. The place where they're really busy cranking out the holiday cheer is the Seas Candies Factory in Culver City, California. For the last 100 years, Seas has been a holiday tradition for many. Do you have a favorite? I love all of them. I mean, I really do. Um, but my very favorite is uh, dark chocolate peanut butter. Pat Egan is C's president and CEO. He's a former energy company executive who's turned into a sort of buttoned-up Willy Wonka. What was the appeal to you to move from that kind of work to selling candy? <laughs> it's C's. I mean, it's candy. You get to make people happy. Founded here in Los Angeles by Charles C., the company used home recipes developed by his mother, Mary, whose picture still hangs in every C's candy shop. We still use a lot of the formulas factor. Peanut brittle over here is an example. We still have the same recipe that Mary had. It's a recipe that's worked well for the company, which has grown from just one shop to over 200 locations, mostly west of the Rocky Mountains. But one Midwest fan is Warren Buffett. Yes, the Oracle of Omaha. In fact, he liked it so much, he actually bought the company back in 1972 and owns it to this day. He also orders special personal shipments of candy every Christmas. He's our number one fan, and he gives it away as gifts. Is that the, the order that, you know, you don't want to screw that one up? We're aware of when that order's going out. Filling one billionaire's order is actually pretty simple compared to trying to make candy when both sugar and chocolate are rationed which is exactly what happened during World War II. The call was, well, do we substitute that so that we can maintain production and satisfy the number of customers that are banging down the door? Or do we say, we're only going to make so much, and once it's sold, that's it? And that was the, the choice that they made, which I think is a really good story about um, if it doesn't meet our standards, we're just not going to do it. And that wasn't the only time C's literally ran out of candy. It also happened just last year during the pandemic. The factory shut down, and since C's doesn't use preservatives, their candy literally has a shelf life. The assembly line actually stopped. Yeah, yeah. from early March until um, late April, early May, we donated all of our candy, food banks, frontline workers. Uh, so you also gave away your whole inventory? Yes, yeah, yeah, entirely. To Egan's great relief, C's production lines are up and running again. And if this all looks sort of familiar, well, there's a reason. Here she comes. Lucille Ball and Vivian Vance actually trained for that beloved candy scene right here in this C's factory. You want some help? Iris Eshu, vice president of food safety, let me try my hand on the assembly line. Anything that is extra, yeah. you want to remove from the board. And it was Lucy-esque. You're a little slow there, Luke. Is this normally this fast? Yep. So are you starting to feel like Lucy? I mean, more than I want to. <laughs> I need to go take a break, OK? <laughs> That's a lot. Oh, sorry, was that? Unfortunately, I was kind of a flop in Candyland. So I decided to leave it to the experts. After all, they've been doing it for 100 years. They must know something. 